Welcome to another edition of Dish It Out. Joining us today, we have two wonderful special guests, just like Madonna, first name basis, Alfio. Thank you. You're very welcome. And joining us from the Frog and the Peach, we have Chef Joe Erdely, which I think should be the name of the third type of waffle. And of course, the man who needs no introduction. I guess that's me. Doug Fee, welcome to another edition of Dish It Out. We're starting off, you know, we're going to skip the entree today. We're going to start with the appetizer, a wonderful, classically made Caesar salad. Did you say skip the entree? And then we're going right to dessert, oh. because we have a Belgian waffle, apple confit, and butter, brown butter ice cream. That's amazing. So stick around. You're going to like what you say. Welcome to another edition of Dish It Out. Speaking of dishing it out today, look at this bowl here. We have something special in store for you. We have a gentleman coming all the way from Center City, Philadelphia, amongst other places of travel. And it's the one, the only, he's like Madonna. He goes by one name. He's known as Alfio. Thank you. Thank you. And welcome to our, our neighborhood, Alfio. And you know, I've been trying for the longest time to get Frank to eat a salad. And we finally <laughs> we're going to be able to do that. We hope we can get him to do this, all right? Notice it's a big salad, okay. though. Okay. <laughs> uh, the salad board here can make one at a time. It can make more than two. Uh, we start with fresh garlic, fork and spoon, a little bit of salt, and a pepper. Pepper will keep it right on this one. Here. Oh, I almost missed it. Well, yeah, that's, that's okay. Nice. It's like dinner and a show <laughs> over here. Okay. I'm glad he catches as well as he throws. I know. We, we crush the garlic. You say the, the fork on the bottom, a spoon on top, and just crush it. And actually, you're going to see the garlic disappear into the wood. I think this is a historic occasion. Is, is this your one million Caesar salad today? <laughs> well, actually, we are over 300,000. No, no one million yet. 300,000 Caesar 000, salads. Yes. Actually, uh, I would have been on a uh, book of record, but they want proof, and I can't. I can't prove how many I made it. You'd have to have a counter every time you did yeah, it. Yeah. So we know this is at least your first one. This is my first one. <laughs> Another historic this occasion. Is, this your is the first garlic. one. Oh. That's the garlic. It's your first one with us. Oh, certainly smell. Now what's uh? So you got a little tool underneath there, a little lazy susan. Yeah, out right. There. All this year I make it without that, and the tablecloths always get wrapped around the salad bowl. Got some fresh anchovy there. Okay, uh, we anchovies. crush the anchovy real, really good with the same technique of the, of the garlic. Now, Alfio, I, I, I've known you in the past and I appreciate you coming in today. And I noticed that you have the true center city Philadelphia accent. Oh, absolutely. I, I, my heritage is I'm an American Indian and people don't believe <laughs> me that. Of course, I'm Italian. Oh, I, I introduce myself sometime and tell people I'm five, six. Completely black hair, and I speak perfect English, and then people know I'm, I'm telling the truth. <laughs> uh, Actually, I, I can prove to you I'm five six. Anyway, this is the anchovies. Uh, now, on top of this, we have a fresh cow egg. And, and, and in, in, in New Jersey mm -hmm. now, Alfio, uh, I don't know if you wear new sanitation laws, we actually have to use pasteurized eggs in New Jersey for that. I, I, I'm sorry, but I have used over 300,000 salad. Nobody ever, ever got sick from the egg. You hear that out salad. there? There you go. This is a little dry uh, gold dust, actually dry mustard. You mix it up really, really good. I was hoping it was gold dust because there's some left. Yeah. <laughs> the price of gold these days. Yeah, you know, we yeah. We should be so lucky. It makes it real, really good. Now this salad bowl here, this is special to you. This isn't something that uh, it's is something that you can really find these days. It looks like something that maybe came up from uh, Plymouth Rock. Well, at the, uh, maybe at Columbus had it on one of his uh, <laughs> his voyages. Right. Until 1980, when the casino opened up in New Jersey, you can find salad bowl everywhere in Philadelphia. 
And after the casino took all the qualified people to work in restaurants and do table-side work, they all disappeared. So I couldn't find any. And this was custom made from a gentleman from Tamaqua, Pennsylvania. Okay. Yeah. Again, on top of this, we do have a little bit of uh, vinegar, red wine vinegar. Okay, carefully measured, I see. Absolutely, a little bit of oil. Got to be the right amount. I'm, I'm just trying to fathom that. 300,000 times oil and vinegar has been in here. Yes, yes. 300,000. salad. I worked in Philadelphia in a place we had 12 waiters. I was the only one making four dining rooms. On Friday and Saturday alone, I used to make it between 350 and 400 salads a night. That's amazing. Wow. Okay. So if we took off your tuxedo jacket, your right arm's gonna be much bigger than your left? <laughs> it is, it is. <laughs> now you yeah, said this, yeah. uh, this Caesar salad, this wonderful technique you have that you did table side for so many years, uh, you made, you, I think you told me that Dennis Leary once came in for the salad in your restaurant. Yes, among all the movie stars and TV stars and the um, sport people and all the fine guests. Yes, uh, I have a lot of memory from the rest of the business and I'm very happy with my results. And uh, I won't be surprised if my old boss from Santa City, Philadelphia, who is watching the show when you air this out, and he would say, oh, I know that guy there. He knows okay. us? He, know, he even knows Oh, he knows me. you, oh. <laughs> yeah. uh, So we had a really nice emulsified vinaigrette in there. And now, uh, this is great. Hopefully our students are watching this too for when we have salads and sandwich week in our food preparation one class. That's right, something you can learn right here on our campus at Mercer County Community College. Alfie, we always try, maybe once, once in a while, we mentioned during the show that you can take a class, whether it be credit or non-credit, right here at beautiful Mercer County Community College, the West Windsor, New Jersey campus. I'd be very happy, I'd be very happy to come back here. It's a pleasure to be here. See that? He wants to come back already. Yeah. That's right. If you notice, though, I'm using the, uh, the wooden spoon to cut the lettuce. Mm -hmm. Do you know why? I, I do not know why. Uh, why? The truth? I haven't got a knife. That's a good, that's a good truth. Yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times we'll teach our students, you know, you can tear the, with your hands. With your hands, Obviously yes. in, in uh, the front of the house, which is where you would prepare this, normally table side, uh, may not be as uh, pleasant to see somebody ripping with the romaine hands. lettuce with their hands <laughs> yeah. in front of you. Yeah, that won't be. This is uh, croutons, very fine and baked it. And then we have a little bit of uh, Italian sugar. Italian sugar? <laughs> Do you know the difference between Italian sugar and American sugar is? Uh, probably the cholesterol. <laughs> no, American sugar is made from sugar cane. Mm -hmm. Italian sugar is made from milk. There you go. And they call them cheese. Now we sprinkle it on top, a good portion of that, give it flavor. Now do you go okay. with just uh, plain croutons, or do you want the garlic, do you want any seasoning uh, on there, or do you have enough seasoning I think you put too much cheese, okay. Too much cheese, who'd have thunk that? Uh, that took Frank, some, not, sir. I took some buck. <laughs> uh, I think yeah. you need some, uh, some, maybe some chicken in there, or? Well, we can do with chicken, we can do with shrimps. Yes. Yes. We, where, uh, where are they at? I had uh, available in my place, I had available with chicken, shrimp, so plain. And I call, I don't call plain anymore, I call the original. The original? Yeah, See, the original. That, that sounds better than plain, yeah, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. And the and salad is, a, this is a finished product. This is it. That's ah. lovely. See, that's different than uh, one of my favorite comedians, Chris Rock, when he tosses a salad. It's a little different of a, right, would you folk like of to, a genre. Uh, do you like to taste this thing? Uh, you we'll like to taste it. Yeah. Do you have chicken and shrimp? Uh, you... Well, we can get some chicken. I'm sure in the field, but I saw some chicken when I came Absolutely. In. Yeah. Did you say chicken's from a field? Yeah, I saw some chicken around. Does it get any fresher? Yeah. Now, how would you plate this up in the restaurant? Oh. Would, would somebody uh, be by your side to hand go... you plates? No, actually, yeah, we have a a pile of plate and I take it and I uh, use that almost like a I tongue. Use, uh, oh, this is uh, it's fun. This is uh, absolutely fun. I just can't get over this salad bowl. I mean, that's that's somebody brings this out to the front of the house. That makes dining an experience. I know Lowry's in uh, Chicago with their, they do a famous spinning salad mm -hmm. and they have a bowl like this that they spin around and the server brings the dressing over top of their head and stirs it in. Would you like to do the honor of That's what I'm talking about. That's a portion there. You know, as usual, there's one thing missing. The forks? Exactly. <laughs> Gotta go find a fork. Well, use the original uh, the tools that God gave us. Mm. Well, I thank you. Yeah. 
I don't, I don't think uh, my boss would allow me to do that. Now, if you'd like to learn how to make a beautiful salad and many more culinary delights, look for us on the web, mccc.edu slash hrim, and see when we have our credit and non-credit classes here. We offer them both. And we have forks there, too. You know, one of the best parts about taking one of our culinary classes on campus here is that uh, you get to play with the food, and you don't have to do the dishes we do them for you. That's wonderful. That's a, that's, that's a, that's a plus. That does not hurt. Now, see, I, I see the, the crew here eyeing up all these salads because we've played it up more than two. Can't blame them. It smells wonderful. It's a, too bad you can't smell the, the, the garlic and the anchovy. And when I had my own TV show in Philadelphia in the late 70s, early 80s, it was the crew waiting in line for the salad and the, the special coffee which I told you about earlier. Bon appetit. No imitation Caesar salad here. Nothing but the real thing. fork. Okay. All right, so... We it's time, time to dig in. in. This is going right. to be a little messy, isn't it? Do I need a knife for this? Uh, actually, you can pinch it and bite it. Okay. Let's get on in there. I'm going to take advantage so I can talk since Frank has his mouth full. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us on this segment of Dishing Out. Stick around, we got more for you. Well, welcome to another segment of Dish It Out. Of course, with me as always, our host, Chef Doug Fee. And Chef, who do we have joining us today? Joe, and Joe, I can't remember your last name. Oh, it's um, Erdely. Erdely. Is that one of those things he didn't throw it at you? <laughs> yeah. But we do know where Chef Joe's from. It's from exactly. the famous Frog in the Peach restaurant over in New Brunswick. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, they were open in 1983, is that correct? Sounds about right, 20, 27, 28 years. 27, 28 on. years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. First time. And Joe is the pastry chef there, so uh, we, we're going from salad to dessert. It's a beautiful thing. <laughs> it is a beautiful thing. Unfortunately, I don't think he's brought enough for me, for us, I mean, so, but we'll see what he's I making see today. I where priorities are, okay. <laughs> but you can always go visit him over at the Frog and the Peach, or better yet, uh, in addition to doing that, if you want to learn how to make these recipes, you know where this is going. I can see it coming now. Beautiful West Windsor, New Jersey, Mercer County Community College, where we have not only a culinary arts program, but a pastry arts program, and we also have hotel restaurant management, culinology, cooking, baking. Non-credit? Non-credit, of course. Yeah. Come on in, take a class. But more importantly, it's time to see Chef Joe make some dessert for us. Excellent. So, so welcome, and what's on our menu? Tonight, or today, depending on what time it is on TV, I guess, um, we'll be doing a Belgian-style waffle served with a, an apple confit and a brown butter ice cream, toasted Ooh. pecans. You know what my favorite dessert is? What's that? It could possibly become, what'd you say you're making? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Belgian waffles. Apple confit. Apple confit, brown butter, ice cream, toast, pecans. You lost me the Belgian waffles. I do love Belgian waffles. <laughs> I think they're good for every meal. So take it away. Right. So okay. where do we start? We're going to start uh, with the most labor-intensive part, uh, which is the waffle dough itself. I thought um, you were going to say eating it. Well, that, well <laughs> after four courses, it might be uh, the most difficult. Um, we have is a Liege-style dough, which is, in Belgium, there are two different types of waffles. There's the Liege-style and the Antwerp. Now, when you normally eat a waffle uh, at your um, extended stay America or wherever it happened to be, uh, you get the, the batter in the iron. That's typically more of the Antwerp style. With the Liege style, it's essentially a yeast dough that's fortified with sugar and butter. Two good ingredients. <laughs> to the point where there is more butter and sugar in there than flour. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And it gets set up and it rises and we bake it off as is. Um, with the magic of television, I, I, I hope. Um, we didn't film me making this though, did we? But you did make this, right? But I did make it, did, yes, you did yes, make I certainly it. did, it's here. We witnessed it, we saw you make it every day, you make <laughs> similar things over at the Frog and the Peach, so we know that you have the credentials, if not, you wouldn't be here with right. us. Okay. But so, nonetheless, even the names that you're saying, Antwerp, 
Yeah, it, do, it doesn't sound as uh, as flattering. <laughs> would you say the other is Liège? Liège. Yes. What would you like, the Antwerp <laughs> or the Liège? Well, if you don't stop talking, we're not going to get either one. So, okay. what's next? <sighs> next, we'll get to the ice cream. And in order to make ice cream, we need to make ice cream base. So, what we're going to do is we're going to take three cups whole milk. So this is the most labor-intensive part. This is the most labor-intensive part that TV can show. All right, so let's let's. He's going to show you how to do this, but we're going to turn this off and eat. <laughs> no. No. Oh no, we're not. All right, back to the ice cream uh, base. <laughs> to that, we will add a cup of heavy cream. So I'm, the first was whole milk. Whole milk. And then heavy cream. Heavy cream. Two cups of sugar. Now I'm going to throw about a cup and a half into the cream for now. Stir that up. All right. And how much is this going to yield in the end? Um, this is actually a half batch of what I typically make in the restaurant, so this will probably yield about uh, a little more than a quart okay. of ice cream base. And I've seen a lot of the different dishes that they serve in the restaurant, and, and the portions are, are good. I mean, they're not my type of portion but uh, <laughs> but they're really very artistic and uh, it's, it's so we always say food you eat with your eyes first mm -hmm. and I'm sure this is gonna be just as lovely as the dishes that you make in the restaurant it really it really is like a labor of love I think because at the at the restaurant especially um, everything is made from scratch so I mean you can as you can see with this that we're doing today um, there isn't a single uh, processed ingredient that I haven't made myself, with the exception of maybe the apples mm -hmm. that didn't come from my backyard. So what's going to happen is next is we're going to bring this cream and sugar mixture up to a boil. Um, want to be very careful because when cream starts to boil it will go all over the place if you don't keep a, a close eye on it. And we're also going to be working with one dozen egg yolks. Now typically when I'm uh, working in the restaurant, we will uh, do something known as tempering, where we will take the hot cream, and we'll drizzle it into the egg yolks, and slowly bring them up to temperature, that way they don't mm -hmm. scramble on the final product. Yes. Um, with today though, since we're a, li a little bit uh, strapped for time, I figure I'm just going to go through the ba basic process and then go right into the next ingredient, which is also the second most labor intensive uh, item on the plate, which is going to be the apple confit. So why do all this work at home? Go in and see <laughs> Joe over at uh, Frog and the Peach. He can make you some dessert. That's right. And mm -hmm. if you're like me, and the portion size for some reason, I mean, they're actually the portions you're supposed to eat, but, it, <laughs> but if it's not enough for you, then they allow you to order two, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, so yeah, so I mean, there were... That's what I do. There was, there was two, three. Oh, two, three, one to go. It doesn't, it's... Hey, look, don't get carried away. <laughs> one to go. You didn't even bring enough for us today to one to go. I thought we ordered two to go today. Oh, my Let's talk to the director about that. I yes, think. yes, I know that. So then once the cream and sugar mixture comes to a boil, we will slowly whisk everything in. Minding the heat also. And once that comes up, we will let this normally sit in an ice bath to cool down to room temperature. It's best to leave this in the refrigerator for at least a day so that the cream and the eggs and the sugar can all hang out for a while and get situated. You end up with a creamier ice cream uh, when you let it sit. And then um, as this is right now, this is a simp all simple uh, neutral ice cream. No flavor, just sweet cream. What we did earlier was we took butter and we almost burnt it in a saucepan. Almost. Almost. Into a state that is called brown butter. You should show them what that looks I like. I should. Oops. So I will. So we can oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, there we clear. Go. See, Chef Fee's prepared. He's got the clear. Oh, right in. Almost looks like a syrup, right? Mm-hmm. That's some serious brown butter. And the now, you said that you only make uh, about two quarts of this at a time? Yes. Why not just make, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten gallons at a time and then flavor it later as you want? As, as it is. Or bring some here. <laughs> I mean, if you have any extra. So long, as, nice. so long as you have the freezer space, I have no problem. Yeah, we do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what I did not show you just now is as you brown the butter, sol butter solids also brown and settle to the bottom. 
And that's really what we're looking for as far as a garnish. So that's going to go also right in and it's going to give the ice cream a speckled, almost like vanilla bean looking consistency. Stir that in and then to taste you add the brown butter. Now before you do this all, um, I, forgot, I failed to mention earlier, you do this warm because if the ice cream base were to cool down, the butter would set up and you will end up with globs of butter floating in your ice cream. Ah. Which Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. We Is that want the voice of experience talking. Have you seen yes. that once or twice? Oh my goodness! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So right, we can. What are we doing now? Uh, we're just going to set this aside. Okay. Um, typically, what you would do okay. is let this cool and then throw it into your ice cream machine. Um, spin it up until done. Next step. If they don't have an ice cream machine at home, what would they? Could uh, they make this at home still? You could. You could do this. There's a couple of methods I've been reading up on You're recently. Saying, Cool it in the fridge first for 24 right, hours let it is what sit. you'd recommend. Right. Um, there's a method that I found out about. If you guys, if anybody out uh, at home, I assume, uh, can get into, uh, they get their hands on liquid nitrogen. Wow. All you need is a KitchenAid mixer with the base in it, with a wire whip attachment, bring it up to a mix, and as it is going, you pour your liquid nitrogen into it. It will freeze instantly, and you'll have ice cream in about 45 seconds. Wow. So if you're not Michael Vantaggio, <laughs> and you don't have liquid nitrogen handy, right. <laughs> we're looking for another method. A because chances are, if you have liquid nitrogen, you probably have a uh, ice cream maker too. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm just going to go out there with that. A, a chilled, a chilled bowl in a, a standard mixer. Um, uh, occasionally uh, spinning and chilling. What you, essentially, what you want to do is you want to freeze this this base down and also incorporate air into it. So if you work in batches, chill it. Uh, put it in the food processor or in the, the mixer, whip some air into it, chill it some more. Uh, eventually, you will get ice cream. I think a lot of people were just having flashbacks to the 80s there because you were saying spinning and chilling. It <laughs> <laughs> was the 80s decade, wasn't it? Wiki, wiki. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving onward. Moving on. Uh, we will do something that um, I top the waffles with. It is, I call it apple confit. I'm sorry, what waffles? The waffles that we will have eventually. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I knew we were going somewhere with that. And confit is a style of, it's a method of cooking certain things, uh, which essentially, it's a French technique, um, which translates to in its own juice, essentially. Um, so what we're doing here is I have about four gala apples peeled and diced, and they've been soaking in acidulated water with a lemon squeezed into it. That's, That's a big word. Yeah, I'm it is. sorry. Nice word. Sigillated. Sigillated. Right, we also so. offer English 1 and English 2 here at beautiful <laughs> Mercer County Community College. Acidulated. Okay. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is add this, which I did not bring up. This is a quart of apple cider that I boiled down with one pint of granulated sugar. And what we're going to do is continue to bring it down. Oh, that's real cooking here. Yeah. See, it's not all TV, is it? And my method of doing this is Typically, I would have a candy thermometer, and I would cook this to the hardball stage in sugar, which is about 250 degrees Fahrenheit, turning it into what essentially is candy. Once it reaches that point, we are going to add these apples, and the moisture in the apples will be released, thinning out the caramel, while the caramel heat inside of them will also cook the apples simultaneously to the point where we'll have apples in its own syrup in a relatively short amount of time. I stopped, I, I, I stopped listening after apples and caramel. Yeah, yeah. Or candy apples, it's all good. Exactly. Yeah, exactly, candy apples, either way I'm lost. Just want to eat some. Okay. So essentially we're making a simple syrup instead of using water, we use some cider. We use cider, yeah. And then, uh, well, at the restaurant we'll also, we season it with certain propri proprietary, proprietary herbs and spices. Meaning that he's not going to share with us. Please. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> Proprietary. They put a frog and a peach in every uh, dessert. Oh, did I let it out? <laughs> so as you can see, I don't know if you can get a shot of this, but you can see the sugars are actually bubbling up in this I'm real. Sure. I can move this down, so. Oh, that okay. reminds me of that, that What's Happening episode. Wow. Bubbly brown sugar. Of course, that's not brown sugar. But <laughs> that's how the song goes. Which does remind me, they also teach music here, Frank. Yes. You can even do voice I should, lessons. I should, I should go back. I do need that. 
OK, and while that's going, we might as well get the waffle going. Absolutely. Right. So in, I like the sound of that. In our waffle iron. Do we'll you need do any uh, spray or, or no, fat for that? No, everything. It's all, it's all built it's in. Oh, I mm -hmm. love the sound of that. <laughs> it's all in there. So normally what we do is we have uh, a different type, a different style of waffle iron um, at the restaurant where it's round, um, deep, so I can usually stretch it as a pizza dough. Okay. Uh, but in this case, I think I might be able to get close to two. That's, so, that's what we look. There's right. one, two. I, I like <laughs> You can get a third out there. We'll One, see. two, three. There you go. <laughs> they teach math here at Mercer County Community College. As That's well. absolutely. That I'm good at. So with that, we the singing will not so much. <laughs> rest it in. Seal it up, and hopefully we'll have a waffle very shortly. While that's cooking, we will add our apples. In fact, we might as well do this off the heat. So this is four gala apples? Four gala apples or okay. uh, uh, any sort of sweet or tart baking apple, something that will hold up to the heat. Um, when you are cooking apples, the, the type of apple says a lot. Um, it could be the difference between having an apple pie full of apple slices and an apple pie full of applesauce. Mm -hmm. I hear what this one's saying. <laughs> I'm delicious, eat me. The smell of the sugar is getting to your head there, Frank. <laughs> uh, what's my excuse normally? And so we'll just bring that back up to heat. And as that's going, we can probably get started on the plate up very soon. Okay. Nice and it's going to appear before your eyes right after this. <laughs> Now it's almost Frank's favorite time where we get the sample. Time to eat. Almost, just about. All right. So we just pulled the waffles out of the waffle iron. Um, and this is something of what we would do for a normal presentation. Uh, we have our apple uh, reduction. So what we'll do is we'll just kind of spoon that right across. Get some more of this. That smells good. The syrup. It's my favorite part. Did you say spoon that right across? Spoon it right, right across. Right across my lips? Exactly. Whenever it needs to go. Oh, that's the stuff. Mm -hmm. You know that's good, right? Mm-hmm. And then to drink that. We will take our brown butter ice cream. Which I think like my take on this waffle dish is if we're putting brown butter in ice cream, we might as well let that butter melt all over it, just like a normal waffle. Oh, it's melting all right. And then yeah. we will top it a little bit of Confection sugar. Oh, uh, this is where Doug always talks about the bakers, right? You gotta and have your powder sugar. And, and some baker. toasted pecan. I didn't see you toast oh. those. Oh, we did it over the break. Sure. All right. So there we have dessert. So here we have our finished product, our Belgian waffle with apple confit and brown butter ice cream, courtesy of Chef Joe Erdely from the Frog and the Peach. He's still here? Yeah, it was a pleasure, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Joe, thank you. And no problem. Thanks very much. Enjoy. So you've seen two wonderful dishes prepared today. Of course, Alfio and Chef Joe. And the dishes, of course, we started off with the Caesar salad, which was quite delicious. And we ended up with, um, this again, I believe was a Belgium. I have to take another taste just to, yeah, just to make sure. Just Good to make idea, sure. Frank. While I'm, while I'm doing that. I want to thank our special guests for joining us this afternoon. Nice to be here. And joining us at the Culinary School at Mercer County Community College. We'd like to see you back here again on Dish It Out or right here on campus. Our beautiful culinary school. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.